Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. This video is rather a fun challenge to illustrate how you could put your analysis skills into action in just 10 minutes. And this challenge is about analyzing your expenses. I've downloaded my bank statement in the past one year. This data set includes all the transactions that I made in the past year, including the date, the description and the amount of transaction. This is because the other day I was wondering how much I'm spending on groceries every month and whether it is increasing over time and also what's my fixed expense in a month, whether it is also increasing over time as well. And with this video, I also want to grab the opportunity to say thank you for more than 500 subscribers. Your support has been really a great motivation to me to keep making videos about data careers, data science skills and tech our time is limited today, so let's get right into it. Let me first spin up our R Studio and create a new R project. Let me call it Expense Analysis. Let's now create a new R script file, and the shortcut for this is Control Shift N. Now let's uh, save this file as analysis.r. So see that my data file now is outside of the project folder. So let me quickly move it into this folder. I'll be using two libraries, namely data.table and ggplot2. So let me go ahead and load them into my R session. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to load in our data file. So let me call it dtin equals to um, every. And now I just need to copy the name of the file into here. We don't need to specify the uh, absolute path because we are inside the project folder. Let me run this. Yeah, and now let's view our data very quickly. Well, you can do view or you can also do double click with the control. I think I don't need to use the, some of the columns here, for example, the code transaction type and the notifications. So. I'll go ahead and remove these columns. So let me call these steps. This is nicer. This is processing step or pre-processing. Um, now let's first uh, remove unnecessary column. And we have, uh, we can specify the columns to remove as a vector of, um, here we have uh, code transaction type and we have the notification. Now let's go ahead and remove this column. Now the next thing we do is to rename some of the column names here because we have slashes and spaces in our column names which is not very convenient to work with. So um, I'll rename those columns. So I will just do because there's only a few columns here, so I will just do it like this. I think the next pre-processing step I'll do is to, to transform the name column, to transform everything into lowercase, because we might want to do later some string matching to categorize our expenses. So the way to do it is to, to use the two lower function in base R, which is very convenient. Let's run this. Yeah, now everything is converted to lowercase, which is perfect. Um, the next thing I would do is maybe to, to sort the date. Here we have now um, the date in the descending order. So that means that we have the earliest date, the most recent ones um, to the furthest one in the history. And um, I think, well, I want to reverse this order. So we just um, reorder rows ascending date. Now we have dt in is be equal to dt with the order. Oh no, we have order um, date. It's very simple because the order function here has to default as the ascending order. So let's see. Yes. It works. And if we look at the DT in at the moment, we can see that some of the transactions here are credit transaction, um, which we don't care about for now because we are only caring about the expenses. So I'll go ahead and uh, filter them out. 
And also you can see transactions here are transactions with myself. So yeah, those are probably my transactions um, that I made transferring money to between my payment account and my saving account. So, well, I would want to um, remove them because I think it's not relevant. Remove transactions to myself and keep only debit transaction. So I will do DT. Now I will change the data name. DT will be DT in with the filter. And the first filter is removing debit credit will be equals to debit and name not equal to my name, which is so let's do this. Yeah, seems to work. So this is probably everything that I need to pre-process for this data. Let's go ahead and start doing our analysis, our actual analysis, which is the, f the most fun part. The first question I want to answer is, what is my food expenses and how it increases over time? So at the moment, I don't have a label for the food expenses. I don't know which one is actually the food expenses. So I would need to find a way to identify them. I could read all these transactions and classify them manually, but I don't think it's a smart way to do. So um, I will create a set of um, keywords for the food. These are the name of the supermarkets that I usually go to. So um, I would just grab this name and put it here. And I also go to some other stores um, to do my groceries. So here's another supermarket in the Netherlands. We also have Gall and Gall where I sometimes go to um, to buy wine and alcohol. Um, I also go to a um, Vietnamese supermarket, which is called Maybe. And sometimes if I go to work, for example, uh, nowadays, not so often anymore, but sometimes if I go to the office, I would, I would eat at the canteen. So it's called catering. Um, so I think this is roughly all the places that I usually go to to do my groceries. And now our job is just to create the label for those. I would do DT um, with the grab L mm. because grab L only works for one pattern at a time so we need to to create the pattern for for all these keywords and we can do it by doing the paste food key with the collapse equals this and then now we can do the matching for all these keys um we will do food key pattern and for those that this returns true we will say category, which is another, a new column. Category is equals to food. Yeah, now we have the food label as category. That is great. And the next step I want to do is to aggregate those grocery transactions into, into month. Oh, see that the date here is not formatted as date column because it's now still character. So we need to do a little bit pre-processing here, that column format. So we have the date will be equals to as date, which is uh, converting the string into date, character, date. And we can spe specify the format here as um, year, month, I think I will create a new data file called DT food with the filter on the category. Category is equal to food. Now we have everything ready to aggregate the DT food on the month level. So we would say um, food by month would be equal to DT food. Food expense, let's call it that way, is equal to the sum of all the amount. We'll say by the month is equal to 
let's space the month and the year together. Let's do it like this. Yeah, let's take a look at this data set. Oh no. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I put this in the string, which is very stupid. Yeah, now it works. Now I also want to visualize this data set as well. And um, I want to create a bar chart with those expenses as the bars. Let's do a ggplot. Um, with the data is equal to food by month. The x axis is equal to the month and the y axis is equal to the food expense. And then we also have geom bar, which is for the bar chart. And I can also fill the bar with some colors. So I want to make it beautiful. So I will search for some custom colors. So I can say corn blue, cornflower blue. Yeah, and this is it. It works at least. This is what we think it should look like. However, the month here is messed up. You can see that the month is not in the correct order anymore. So the reason for this is that ggplot would change the order of the data when the column is not a factor um, type. So we will need to specify that the month here is actually a factor and levels is equals to month. Now if we run this ggplot. So the order of the date is now kept the same as the, in, in the original data. We can also do another thing, which is to include a line here, uh, which indicates the average monthly uh, food expenses. So we can go ahead and create something like the um, edge line, which is a horizontal line with a y intercept is equal to the mean of food expenses. And we can also specify the line type here as the dashed. Now it works. My average food expense has probably slightly increased or actually increased a lot in the past year. And on average, I spend probably 275 euros every month, um, which is what I expected. But um, I don't like the fact that I'm spending more money on food. Now let's move on to the second question that we have, which is about analyzing the fixed expense. By looking at this data set, we can see that there are some expenses that are occurring every month. It's repeating. For example, this is my rent. I also have monthly subscriptions like Spotify and Netflix and stuff like that. So we need to find a way to identify those repeating expenses or the fixed expense every month. I think the easiest way to do it is to identify the duplicated rows in the data in terms of name and amount. So if we see that a transaction is having the same name and same amount every month. That means that this is a fixed expense. We will say the DT with duplicated name and amount. And we will say category then would be equals to, let's say, uh, fixed. Ah, you see that this is not working. I think this only works for the following rows. So yeah, because the duplicated function here only identifies the second occurrence onwards. Another way I think we can do is to count the number of occurrence of X row in terms of name and amount. So that is probably a better way. So let's say frequency is equals to the um, equals to n with by name and amount. The only thing we need to do now is to say with those that have the frequency larger than one, we will say that this is uh, the category would be fixed. View the data now. I think it's working. There's a small risk here um, if we do it this way, because it could happen that the food expense by any chance might also have this exactly the same amount. But um, it is probably 
rarely occurring and we probably don't need to care much about it for now. Now we will say that the DT fixed with the category is equal to fixed. I want to aggregate the fixed expense per month so I would say by month is equals to we can do th exactly the same as what we did earlier for food so we say dt fixed is here the fixed expense um, here is the amount and we also have the month and year yeah it works and we can see that our my fixed expense is ranging between 500 and even 700 sometimes i'm also now interested in whether my expenses by year also changes so i'll say fixed by year is equal to dt fixed by month i will average them so we'll say um, fixed expenses is equal to mean of fixed expenses and this is by oh i have a little problem here that i don't have the year column so a little trick is that i would also aggregate this by year now i can use the year column in this aggregation well you can see that my fixed expense actually slightly decreased over the past year but actually it's not that much but i'm glad that i didn't spend much more than last year on subscriptions and stuff like that oops i already run out of time so i guess i need to stop here but there are so many other things i want to do on this data set the other day i was looking at some personal finance app and i want to see how they analyze the data and how they categorize the data and how they display those information a lot of them don't seem to take into account that sometimes you spend um, some money on something but then later you get the re reimbursement for that money i think they should have a function to cancel those transactions out this can be very easily done in r so these little things are the things that you notice when uh, you are actually also doing the analysis Thank you for sticking with me so far and with this video I want to encourage you to use your analytic skills and your programming skills to also solve your own problems in your own daily life and these skills that you have can be invaluable and you never know what you're gonna get out of just 10 minutes and if you think that you don't have time or if this is too complicated this is too difficult and you don't know where to start I would recommend you reading this book shut your monkey and this is quite a short and fun read uh, it is all about how the monkey in your brain or your inner critic can actually prevent you from getting things done and actually make a start on something new so highly highly recommend this well it's a little bit of rambling but i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time bye bye